Listen well, all of you. Usas shall indeed grow in grace and beauty. Beloved by all who meet her. No, Hassan, please don't do this. I'm begging you. The princess can be woken from her death sleep. But only by true love's kiss. Protection, war, love, lust, desire, abundance, protecting abundance. All these different categories is going to be this topic of discussion and the woman of the hour. Here we go. Hey, keepers and conjurers. Welcome back to another video. My name is El Rey O. I am a wife a podcast host, a content creator, a demonologist, an image consultant, and spirit keeper. Today we're going to be talking about succubus, succubies, um, and what embodies the succubus and where to find them in history, literature, and in religion. So let's get started. Before I do so, if you guys like these kind of videos, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. If you guys find these uh, videos informative and you like them, please, please, please head over to our website. Link will be in the description box below too. And you get to have little different coupon codes in the description box below for you guys. So you guys can utilize that as well. All right. So succubus. Why is it in every conjure site we see succubus, succubi, incubus, um, sirenistic beings and everything? Well, the reason why is because a lot of people actually get them. A lot of times succubies are categorized as demons. Let's, let's just face it. Oh dear. What an awkward situation. Succubuses are categorized as demons, demons, divine beings. Sometimes they're categorized as vampire, cannibal demons, cannibal vampires, and sometimes they're considered as fae. In different cultures and regions of, of this world, succubus is a is a force to be reckoned with, actually. Um, a lot of times in history, they're saying that if you guys do like the, the Google Wikipedia search, saying that succubuses are actually incubuses, male succubies that imitate themselves as female to kind of lure their prey or lure whoever it might be, eating and siphoning energy, sexual energy, to the being itself or to the embodier, which is the succubus, right? In this case, in, in what we studied a lot with this, and we're gonna leave references to in the description box below, is a lot of times succubies are kind of misinterpret and kind of misconceptualize with the spirit keeping community um, and even in pop culture. In the spirit keeping community, we get succubuses for a lot of reasons, for protection, for love, um, to find love, to find the right job, to protect you guys in your everyday life, to protect your family, to attract and allure abundance and things of that nature. In some, in some religions, like I said before, Abrahamic, they're considered as demons because of the horns and wings and tails, right? But if you guys kind of look at literature and you look at the Bible, you'll see depictions of what happens to be a biblical term uh, or a biblical name called Lilith. Now, sometimes Lilith embodies the succubus or vice versa, or they look a, a similar way versus a real succubus. So a lot of times people that get succubuses are already having DNA um, that are part of them and they want to kind of be related to, uh, they want their companion to kind of relate to them because they already know what type of being that they want to be with because they already embody the succubus energy. In spirit keeping, that means a person who is highly sexual, looking for love, or needing to negotiate in business or in school. I actually, a lot of people who actually buy succubus, succubus and incubus beings are actually in law enforcement and they're lawyers. I want to say law enforcement. A lot of them are students. Vampires are usually for law enforcement, but a lot of times students utilize succubus energies for 
for siphoning their own energy to getting their own energy offering with their companions and vice versa if they're giving sexual energies to their succubus as well. So a lot of people were saying, L, can I be Christian? And is it godly for me to, you know, have a succubi and be a crystal witch or practicing the Abrahamic pantheon? And I say, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're going against your religion anyways, so not as well just go all out uh in my opinion i'm not real i'm not a left-hand path type of person however however a lot of <laughs> a lot of pastors actually use a sucky base for their own gain and a lot of times it is very like behind the scenes them getting conjures from creepy hollows and of course our site I see you guys. At the same time, a lot of people who are Christian or Catholic actually use a lot of succubis for their endeavors. Although they are a child of God or they put themselves as a child of God uh, or a woman or a man or a person of God, they still utilize succubus for their everyday life. Not necessarily saying that they worship the being, but it is almost like a coexisting kind of unit within the, the keep. But if you guys talk about religion with your keep, you will kind of see that the succubi have a little bit more, especially the being itself uh, with your companion, have a little bit more of a um, definition that they want to like give to you, like a premonition or a residual that, hey, I know about this too, and we're depicted this. And the reason why we're uh, depicted like this from the Bible is because of the war, because of the Inquisition, because of before the Inquisition too, where different regions in the Middle East actually were giving offerings to whatever matronly deity that represents that succubi or incubi. A lot of cultures actually give it to their their beings or their the succubi like offerings. If you kind of look at the depiction of Mesopotamia and the Middle East and the Baltic region, you kind of see similarities of demons actually and, and succubi that are looking kind of similar. When you kind of go into in Asian regions too, succubis are usually depicted as sirens or dragon-like or than the westernized adaptation of succubis that have the bat-like wings, that have the leather-like wings or bat-like wings and horns. Sometimes succubis don't even have that. And in times, at times too, they they just don't have wings and they just have a tail. The reason why is because it's regional. A, a person that is living, you know, up north, more northern, where there is snow, obviously not have leather-like wings. And if they do, perhaps maybe uh, these beings have a certain type of ability to kind of shield themselves from the cold. Like Asian succubis, we just see the tail. If you kind of look at different adaptations like Beowulf too, well that is a dragon right there, but kind of take that concept of Beowulf, the Angelina Jolie role, and, and kind of adapt that to other regionals regions too in asia you'll see the tail forming you'll see almost like a curved foot heel like as almost as if she's air healing you'll also see the provocativeness in their clothing for all regions perhaps maybe she's showing a little shoulder or legs or perhaps maybe she's wearing a like a baddie outfit and she's just revealing a lot of skin because honestly they're treated as gods basically and goddesses when we kind of talk to, when I kind of talk to my ink, uh, when I kind of talk to my succubis, succubuses about their form and what, what westernization kind of really think that it's the bastardization of that definition. Because why would you say that origin form is incubus when incubuses have a whole nother ability actually and a whole new other, I guess, role to play in, in, in spirit keeping and in just spirituality and sexes of that type of being right so when you kind of look at european too there's all these categorizations of succubis you kind of look at southern ireland and 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 and, and um welsh area and, and things of that nature the succubis look almost like angels with the thick wings almost like maleficent here and with that, it kind of is that era of succubis. Usually succubis come from Cambia or um, regions of 
war and and debris and they kind of make things out of nothing basically they find luxuries in the most decrepitative the most ruined like places luxury to us is different than to sucky buys you know like some people you know prefer coach than you know Louis Vuitton and they're both really great bags right but the sucky the sucky bus probably might just use the coach because it's a little bit more cheaper and it still serves the same purpose and it's still good quality than to go for Louis Vuitton right that's the only comparison I can do um they're going to find a simplicity of your everyday life and make it as a luxury they're going to compliment you they're going to feed you this energy saying um, usually, um, general, general, generally, because they are supporting you. They, they are a very supportive being. Um, the darker they get to you, the more, uh, the more complicated their friendship gets because you know it's free will that they, that that they you know kind of embody. However, you'll have really great conversations with that, really good intelligent conversations, and really good mindful thinking and inspirations too, with with them and a lot of depictions um too in going back to westernized uh, civilization and and that culture a lot of times too you know succubies and and people who kind of worship these beings were always um flogged they were they were executed they were um treated as if they weren't um human i guess now if you kind of go to like southern like europe italy um <laughs> per, per se you'll see a lot of succubus um you'll see a lot of succubus imagery if you go to regional calabria or pompeii you'll see like a lot of um creatures and beings that are statues that consort with succubies and incubus um with succubus and that is something that I see a lot going on too in the spiritual side. A lot of times the succubus is your messenger, your executioner, your protector, your um, your bank account. Like they have like all these things as a representative to you. And they carry themselves in a very serious manner. Like you'll have like um, here and there, like, you know, a, a very outgoing, a very um, like um, funny uh, personality. Oh look, the little beast is about to fall off the cliff but at times you'll have like the you know one of my one of our succubies that we are um boarding doesn't find a lot of my jokes amusing so they'll let that know she'll let that know that i don't find that amusing um you're not funny and you'll kind of get these different critiques from your succubus that kind of teach you um that you should kind of better better your life or kind of work on your personality or perhaps maybe perhaps maybe you need to change your life because you're doing something bad or perhaps maybe that kind of personality is not benefiting you a lot of succubus spirit keeper tend to exhibit signs of personality changes uh, due to the fact that they feel a little bit more confident and with the Pathfinder program too if you guys are interested we have a sale on the Pathfinder program ultra um, if you guys are interested in that, I have a lot of Pathfinders who have succubies and succubuses. A lot of them are in the entertainment industry. Politics. It's where I make my bread and butter from. A lot of um, politics and lawyers and a lot of um, business people. Those are perhaps maybe like people who are in, in politics want that kind of allure and attraction back now let's talk about let's talk about the personality and the type of uh, the type of person that sh can handle a succubus i don't suggest a person uh, a child obviously to have a succubus because it's just so so strong go away go go away uh, i don't like children in fact, I'm going to have another video talking about children and spirit keeping and a whole nother topic with Aldwin and I. But um, for um, the perfect personality or the perfect um, person to have it is a person who is independent, especially independent. And when I say independent, I don't mean single. You can still be in a marriage and still be independent. The reason why is because 
the succubus has a lot of free will. She's almost like, um, you know, I'll do this, but I'll do this in the most unconventional way possible. So what, um, so the second thing too, the second personality that they want is business savvy as well. You don't have to, like, you don't have to rush and open a business. Just know that they're wanting you to create, especially for them, because they, they, um, like I said, find luxury in the most uncommon way. Um, sometimes it's food. And a lot of succubus love food. Like, I'll tell you, the places that I, I take them to, that they actually, um, that I have like a scry, a scrying session, and I go and I put the pendulum in different flashcards, and I, and I scramble them up, and then it's floated down, face down. So the, so the restaurant's name is face down. I put a pendulum above it, and if it's positive on the pendulum, I flip it, and that's the restaurant that we're gonna go to because they want it. I'm telling you, they find a McDonald's. Give me back that filet fish. Give me that fish. Fish filet sandwich artwork. They find it beautiful. They find out a luxury. Do you know that they find fast food luxuries? Because honestly, if you're gonna have a succubus, you're gonna have to feed them. They are so sexy. Like I'm, I'm not saying that. Like like maybe yeah, appearance too. But they're so sexified and so much full of sexual energy, and they have a certain aesthetic that they're always working out. Somehow they're always working out, and you have to have to feed their metabolism as well because. Us as, as spirit keepers, as responsible care, spirit keepers, we're supposed to stay healthy for them, right? So usually at times when I am with the succubus, the person for me is that sometimes I skip my meals. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner are all together until I have dinner and end the day. And sometimes <laughs> any of the succubuses, the ones that are boarders or the one in our keep, usually poke at me. They will poke at me. They will um, drop a, a glass and no one is touching it and it breaks. That's telling me, oh, let me just go in the kitchen and drink a, a glass of milk or something like that. Something small or perhaps maybe let's, let's, you have to have a meal, L. L, you skip, like, let's have a salad. Can you eat a granola bar? Can you eat some yogurt? Can you drink a glass of milk? We need for you to be healthy because they're feeding off of... <clears throat> Of, um, of sexual energy, allure, aesthetic energy too. And um, they're giving that in return to you for protection and manifestation, abundance, whatever it may be with that particular being. The third personality too is a person, um, I'm gonna list all of these zodiac signs that are compatible with succubus. Um, me speaking as a Taurus, um, they're a little bit more, <laughs> For me, it's all about hardware and weaponry. I realized with Succubus, I've been spending a lot of money on weapons, um, like Ashra Construct, or real weapons, like swords, daggers, knives, switchblades, and all these kind of things. Um, I've been recently getting into katanas lately. <laughs> um, and not only that too, um, firearms. They have a, um, a serious fascination with armor and with weaponry because there's such warrior you know like like almost like um valkyries i can say like almost like valkyries um they would um they they just prefer that and honestly i feel a little bit like centered and and and, and my mindset is kind of like um a little bit more protective when i know that our home and office and workshop is safe you're getting a succubus because you really want your asset to be protected. You really want your personality to be protected. You really want that um, that solidarity that when you go into a situation, you'll be confident. Well, they ooze of confidence. Like, I don't know. Let me know in a comment section below if you guys have succubuses and if you started to know, like, you ha you're having a power color now. You're having a power strut when you're going to work, whatever work it may be. I don't care if it's retail or food or even office or even your own entrepreneurship. But your walk is different. Your tone is different. So these are the people that are going to be a little bit more flashier or a little bit more um, good with money. 
very very good with money because they're protecting um really good with money because with their paranoia they a lot of people who are paranoid i'm gonna have to say this because of me um the more that a warrior is saying hey that's too expensive you cannot buy this um or you'll have this repercussion almost like a drill sergeant um to you it's like you cannot buy this l it's going to be detrimental you cannot eat this l because it's going to be detrimental you can eat this because you need this you know what i mean it's it's almost as if they're pushovers or or they're trying to be your coach too while you're trying to like give them things i would say sucky basis as long as you give them your energy um as long as you give them the offering your offering your energy and your time they'll just do things for you that you want or even extra because they got it like that you know what i mean like they're, they're, they're going to be chilling. Like, sometimes if you guys see your succubus, if you guys have mediumistic powers or psychics, you'll see a succubus just laying, you know, like, um, um, their legs on the sofa because, like, they're just lounging. They love lounges, too. They love um, public places where they can absorb all these energies and kind of siphon it to you. And then you kind of siphon that back or give them offerings. There's a lot of benefits for actually having succubus in your keep it just takes responsibility it's not that hard um it is hard though to kind of um talk to your conjurers about like the descriptions to all conjurers out there and i see a lot of conjure sites that are changing their websites for the better congratulations that's good for you guys can you give them a detailed description on the region what they like to eat where they like to eat, who they like to surround themselves with, and actually to their conjurers, you have to have somewhat of a dialogue with your clients, even if they're they're, they're um, paying for one conjurer uh, or one being or maybe even a casting. Sometimes the descriptions are just too vague and too concise, in my opinion. Um, some people are paying sixty-seven dollars and above. Um, and I see th them going for hundreds and thousands of dollars for succubus, royal succubus, paladarian um, um, succubus, um, Persian, like all these different, they're paying so much for these beings and you're only giving them not even a paragraph sometimes and not even a, it's, it's, it's sometimes just shocking how a lot of conjurers are not doing their diligence with, with information. All that to say, guys, I really um, referenced the the descriptions uh, down below and the history and where you guys can kind of, um, I don't want to say challenge your conjurer, guys. A conjurer's job sometimes is to, you know, I kind of, con it's, it's going to sound a little bit contradictory right now, but sometimes a conjurer can only do but so much, okay? I can understand that. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have a dialogue with your customers, guys, especially conjurers. If they're coming to your store and they're asking and they're returning customers and they're asking questions, are you going and you have a brick and mortar store, are you just going to tell them to leave? You just lost a sale. Also, stucky bases are really good for online e-commerce and for brick and mortar stores as well. So you can use them for both.